big silky fish Digging real delicious, getting filthy rich Never been a joker, hate a punk or simp Get your punks up high while I talk my shit I'm so fucking tired of the way they wanna do us I ain't letting nothing slide, I fuck with evolution I just got my gun, license mail to the bando I'm in Minnesota, so I'm thinking about Philando Keep a full tank and a pocket full of pesos Trying to find the IP address of Jeff Bezos I just wanna sit him down and talk about these taxes Then I take the money and I split it into rations Trying to lock us down for the health of the people This shit can't be legal Shit gon' be lethal uh-huh. Quarantine raps, let them go for the low low Took some out the stash, being selfish is a no-go Somebody out there might be needing me to go off Somebody out there listening cause they feel so lost Yes, I feel it too, these are strange times we living in Yes, bitch, I'm militant, don't be so ignorant That's why, uh I'ma do this shit before they stop us Really stop us. Uh. Hey, what? That's why I'ma do this shit before they stop us. Stop us. Stop us. And even then, how could they stop us? You gained some quarantine weight, girl. That's okay. Food up, lads. You still fine as fuck, but here's a play. Buddha blends. Many flavors of Buddha blends. Buddha blends. To get that weight off your back, bay. Buddha blends, nigga. Available in Blue Magic, Green Dream, Orange Crush, and Blood Red. Hi, everybody. Um, man, we did a mm-hmm. whole season, right? Yeah. 12 episodes. 12 episodes. Honestly, it's been interesting because it started out as like, space like space for ourselves to like get some fun off you know and some bars off and to just keep ourselves occupied during quarantine yeah um but you know an abuse reckoning and george floyd and lots of others it's turned into like a little news you know a little couple of news segments with some jokes yeah like a hood classic i'm glad we got to do it um at times i've been like sad doing it because it's sure? like bringing up a lot of topics that yeah are hard to sometimes not not necessarily hard to think about because you think about, a, about them on a daily but hard to digest you know on camera yeah um hard to not cry <laughs> on camera yeah and you know being vulnerable sure. with y'all yeah and Letting y'all see, like, the unmade-up, dusty ass. <laughs> I mean, thank God it was cute, because we definitely um, didn't didn't quite um, feel like getting dolled up to do this. Mm-hmm. We just wanted to do this to do this, and it's definitely been, uh, it's been cool watching this evolve over the, you know, last 12, 13 weeks. We did yes. take a week off for my birthday. 13 weeks. Yeah, and, and, and we did this in, in response to COVID, really. Um, we're like, damn, we're going to be stuck in the house. So, like, we had to figure out something and live streaming and all that shit and twitching and all, doing all that stuff. Um, it interested me, but this interested me more, just kind of getting our bars off on our own platform. And we got, like, 140-something subscribers, baby. Ooh, 148, 148, you know baby. Saying? Thank you, every single fucking one of y'all. We don't care about how many. We care how dope, yeah. the you know what I'm saying? So, y'all, y'all are super dope. Thank you for all the feedback. Um, let us know if you want season two. Um, we have some things that we're thinking about, um, but we're going to take some time off. And if you really want to see a very silky show season two, please let us know. We're at Real Big Silky across all platforms. Mm-hmm. We really do like hearing feedback about this because it's some new shit for us. Yeah. And um, we're and proud of our little show. And we've gotten, you know, obviously better. Very good on camera. A lot better on You know, camera. some of them shows, I'm not going to lie, nigga was dusty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, helped me conquer some self-esteem issues. That's dope. Yeah. What um, shit? Yeah, bring your asses back. Let us know. Yeah. Let and thank know. you so much for watching. Yeah. Bye. I know it's fun to say boycott rhyme sayers, but what does that actually mean? We all know cancellations. Don't really mean shit. 
So here's what you can do. One, don't stream their music. Two, don't buy their merch. Three, when the Rona is over, don't buy tickets to their shows. You can boycott any artist this way. Hi everybody, I'm Psalm One and this is my OG Tip of the week, baby. Season finale, let's go. For the season finale, we're going to do a double OG Tio. A Tio, Tip Squared, right? Tip squared. First one, compassionate curiosity. We might have to do a little definition, but it, it really can help with solving issues. I feel like now is a time when uh, we're rebuilding and doing a lot of talking, listening and learning. And while that's all great, um, being more active listeners and being compassionate listeners, you know, compassionate curiosity is in instead of saying, damn, you ain't even fixed the car. You could be like, hey, did you fix the car? You know what I mean? You, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like understanding the delivery. You can get what you want and you can uh, speak your mind without doing so much of this because we all are going through different shit and we don't know what motherfuckers is going through. So that's my OG yeah. first tip of the week, compassionate curiosity, use it in um, conflict resolution and just your everyday life and I promise you things will get better <laughs> as far as your communication skills what's number two number two is sometimes you gotta remind motherfuckers who the fuck they talking to mm, what? with the compassion and curiosity that's great and everything but sometimes you have to remind people who you're talking to especially when you're like moi who has been more you know I had my rants I had my raves mm. but I'm more subdued lately I'm older you know, I'm wiser, more mature. You don't got to listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 40 and fine, baby. Anyway, um, I just feel like sometimes when um, people uh, know you for not losing your cool, they might try to try you. So sometimes, you know, you got to remind niggas. <laughs> so my OG tip of the weeks or the tips of the week would be one, use compassionate curiosity. Two, don't let niggas walk over you. Sometimes you got to remind them who the fuck they talking to. All right? Y'all have a great season. This has been an amazing thing, and I hope to see you again someday. I am Angel Davenport. You guys already know that because you've been watching since episode one. My stay silky tip for the week is don't forget. Don't forget. Right now, um, we're in the midst of COVID. We're in the midst of reckoning with abusers. We're in the midst of a fucking new age civil rights movement. Yikes. Crazy to say in 2020. Um, I went by the George Floyd Memorial a couple days ago and my account was heartbreaking and empowering and sad and joyful, uh, anger inducing, but I was surrounded by ancestors and loved ones and I could feel that. And for y'all, I just wanna say like, if you're in Minneapolis or surrounding, go visit George Floyd's memorial, go visit it. Um, if you're a person of color, it is a reminder of the pain and the fight and the struggle that we have been working on for fucking centuries and if you're white or a non-black non identifying person you need to go see it so you don't forget don't forget what is going on right now don't forget why you're fighting beside us don't forget how George Floyd was killed and how so many other black people were killed I know this is a heavy topic I feel you I understand but like don't forget what this is about that's my stay silky tip of the week, y'all. Yeah. Man, rip Big Floyd. Yeah. Rip Breonna Taylor. Rip Jamar Clark. Philando Castile. I mean, it's so Every many single. Names. Yeah, every. It, don't it would, fucking forget. Don't forget.
Welcome to a very silky show, Titi's. <laughs> beautiful faces. Thank you. So let's let's go down. Let's go down the line. Like, um, can you introduce yourselves and like your titles, resume, anything you want people to know about your role in the music scene for anybody who may not know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm starting. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Keezy, I have been in the music scene here in Minneapolis for about seven years. Uh, I'm a DJ and a curator, um, toured, and I curate a lot of nights that are centered around women, BIPOC, queer, and trans, and non-binary. Um, Situation jams. Situation, and then um, also another event called Soul Friday that has been going on in Minneapolis for 10 years now. So. Mm. Dope, dope. My name is Sophia Ayres. I am a touring DJ for Lizzo. I'm an artist as well, and I'm also a radio host. I did radio for three years. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Lady Midnight. Mm -hmm. um, I am a vocalist, musician here in town. Um, I've been performing for about 10 years, started as an Afro-Cuban singer for Malamania, moved into an electronic uh, trio called Van Damme, and then started a solo project as Lady Midnight. Um, I've been working with youth in the arts for 17 years. I first started as a pregnancy prevention coordinator for Centro Cultural Chicano. Okay. Then I went to uh, <laughs> the Walker Arts Center and I managed their teen programs, worked there for about three years. And then I've been a resident artist at Culture Club Collaborative, which is a nonprofit that works with um, youth experiencing homelessness, as well as a resident artist for the past three years at Red Lake Middle School on uh, the Red Lake Reservation in Minnesota. Mm. Nice. And we have the Culture Club in common. Yes. <laughs> a, little, a, a little bit last year, so that's dope. Shout out Culture Club. Awesome. Shout out Culture Club. I love them. Hell yeah. So safe to say there is a lot of power between the three of y'all. Yes. A lot of influence. Um, what made you guys want to start a venue in Minneapolis like this? Um, well, personally, I became an artist in Minneapolis. Um, I've been an artist for like 10 years now, and I learned how to DJ here. Um, this city to me is very special to me, as well as the two of them. And we know how much talent is here. There's an amazing, amazing array of all types of talent and abilities and performers here. And we just know how venues and performing have changed our life, and how art changed our life. Mm -hmm. and so when we had the opportunity to have a, a chance to get our own space, we wanted to make it a venue. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember actually the feeling, that first feeling, actually being at the situation yeah. and recognizing like how different it felt because sometimes you don't even realize how much um, smaller you make yourself when you're in situations that are oppressive until like one element is lifted and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so different. So just yeah. being um, without that like heavy presence of like the masculine was really eye-opening for for me and it started conversations that really never ended around like we need our own space we need to do this like we can't depend on these venues yeah, yeah. that's that's a major major key for me is not having to depend on other venues to create the space like aunties i mean just as a curator as myself like it, it has been very tough of getting a message across to to venues to the venues yeah the venues itself to where the performers feel safe to where people that like come into these events feel safe and it's just frustrating as fuck <laughs> you know and, and can we swear <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a whole oh, yeah. this is rated r yeah it's just like tired of that and like this is really frustrating and just really like you know um you know the people that are directly affected like us like creating the space ourselves and not yeah. having to depend on other people anymore you know, mm -hmm. Any that. indie artist that books for themselves ever knows how fucked up it is with venues trying to book. So y'all started a $5 million GoFundMe. And at first glance, it seemed like a big amount to ask the community. But what do you say to that? Can we can we talk a little numbers and how y'all kind of came up with that plan? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, like we wanted to be transparent with our goal to let the community know what we're doing and how much we need to do it. Um, yeah. Do we expect them to pay us $5 million? No, 
<laughs> Real There's shit. a lot of work that we're doing on the other end. Sure. Yeah. Put our efforts into with grants, with contributors. There's a lot of work that we're doing right now to get to that five mil. We just like yeah. the an opportunity to donate and support because we're such we're we're the community is so strong right now because of everything that we went through. And um I just we were just being transparent with our goal. With what you wanted, <laughs> not with what you so it's more like a goal, not an expectation of the community. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that makes. We have like a finance consultant, but we've been looking at like at places that we've looked at so far have ranged from two to three million itself, yeah. and that's like not even including you know um, the property taxes, the insurance, all the licenses that come along with that is a lot of money. Right. Yeah, for sure. Excavation actually can like add up to five million just as that you know. So. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's a lot of money. It may seem like a lot of money, but it's really what we need. To yeah. yeah to open a space like that yeah not even just open it to but to own it and i think that that's a big difference in our conversation is that we're not asking to just open up a venue or to lease one we want to be able to control the fact that we own this so that we don't have to go through landlords changing their mind and once again raising the price yeah already experienced just even in as homeowner or like as renters yeah you know, sure. personal spaces so that's that's the big difference and kind of why that number seems sort of astonishing. Um, but if you haven't managed large budgets, you know, like even within a staff of maybe six people for a nonprofit, you know, they spend fifty thousand dollars in three months. Like yeah. it actually doesn't go very far. Um, yeah. And I want to and we want the community to have what they deserve as well. Not a janky building. I want a janky. Yeah. I don't want. You know, janky like Rinky. Rink, redoing something that already exists. Spot like yeah. we're actually looking for really amazing, amazing foundations of space. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why the goal is what it is. And just in general, I think women are expected to take less, and that's not. No, you, what, what Nicki Minaj say? Drink the pickle juice. If you just <laughs> the juice drink the pickle juice. You know what I'm saying? So. I wanted to know how you plan on running like a nightclub, but also a safe space and like a place of healing. Um, but historically, you know, nightclubs aren't like safe spaces and hence the need for it. So how do you plan on tackling both effectively? I feel like the way that we're looking at space is very transformative and even radical of, um, mm -hmm because we are black indigenous women of color, we want to be able to center that narrative in that space. And I think historically, we haven't been the focus, the priority. At best, we're a novelty. We're not really seen mm -hmm. as um, like the priority or, or just something that deserves protection and deserves space. And I think right there, that's one way that like, we haven't really experienced a nightclub that would do that for us. Right. I also believe that art in and of itself is transformative. It is healing. We were talking about our own experiences like with like at I the club. lost my mind and found my mind at, a, at the venue. You know, <laughs> the, sometimes yeah. I see performers that have changed my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. I decided to become an artist because of a performance that I saw at a club. I think um, in many ways, that in and of itself, especially if you're centering voices within, you know, our community, like who we are, that right there is transformative, that is healing. But we recognize that there's more steps to it than just that. Um, we also want to provide workshops, we want to provide other opportunities and resources for people who may have always had this voice that tells them that they're not good enough, who have historically been oppressed, um, and that say that they can't do something or it's dangerous to be who they are. And we want to allow there to be space for them to creatively work through that. So this is about really working and healing through the arts, um, providing opportunities for people to examine what those roadblocks might be mm -hmm. and, and use the art that they, their, their own expression to be able to articulate that and work through it. Mm. Um, so this will happen like during the day so like yeah. as far as like the layout you if yeah. you imagine like a, a day at, at auntie's like yeah. but between like nine to five for example like that's the day that the upstairs will be open so like upstairs we can provide knowledge like we say in our in our um, um, mission statement 
So the workshops during the, the day and then Yeah. And then the night wouldn't overlap with anything. Nah. So yeah. Right. So like the And there may be opportunities, you know, mm -hmm. at night as well that might include some type of holistic, you know, intentional sure. setting, depending sure. on who is the person programming and booking. Yep. Okay. So in the morning it'll provide knowledge and healing when we like you can go and get a, watch professional seminars. You can learn how to DJ. You can learn how to do sounds. You can yeah. learn how to do lighting. Um, right. Basically, all forms of, of substantial knowledge that could you could roll into your regular life or roll back right into auntie's. You know. Yeah. Like, and and as far as like the healing goes, you know, I providing the youth with these workshops because they're all traumatized right now. You yeah, know? I keep I keep thinking back to like experiences where I've worked at Red Lake Middle School, who has a pretty serious um, issue with substance abuse and suicide. And these are really young kids, you know, we're talking like 11, 12 years old. Yeah. And in working with them, it was difficult to just say, okay, I have these resources, we have this opportunity, make something, because they didn't even know how to articulate their feelings. They weren't there, they were so shut down that they didn't know what they felt or even how to name it and explain it. So there is work that has to be done in order to unlock people's true sense of self, their expression and to name it. So in that way, you know, we're using art as a way to create healing, a way to um, help people come into their full selves. And we're doing that in a space that really centers and caters to their experience because we come from that experience. We're not gonna say that we can speak for everybody, but we wanna give them the opportunity to do so. So working with community is really important for us to develop different strategies, different protocol, working with experts in consent, security, transformative justice, to be able to come up with a manifesto or a code of conduct, um, different protocol so that when there is danger, um, when things do happen because they know that they, we know that they will happen, that we yeah. as a community have been able to define how we take care of each other. I think also it's, we're, we're asking and expecting the community that they respect this space and that they themselves come, for, come forward with respect, not to just leave it always in the hands of the staff and say like, I'm here to be free. I'm gonna like drink all the drinks and start touching and rubbing on everybody because that's what I came to do. Yeah, We're gonna let right. people know straight up, that's not a space where that happens. And I was just about to say that because like this, this is a thing, like I feel like criticisms come sometimes when people never heard of these ideas before, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, what you're talking about is like, yeah, like healing through the art because like, you know, if you fucking look, look listened or looked at what we've been doing the last couple months has been like abusers 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 music abusers abusers you know <laughs> so it's like speaking about that and it's like how you plan on like kind of keeping your venue free of that like you can't control right what people do but you can make it known like we don't fuck with that shit around here you know what i'm saying and like we're not gonna turn the other way if you know that someone is historically like a creeper Mm -hmm. um how do, how do you keep your venue free just with security or what what do we well i mean have y'all been talking about that type of shit or yeah and like and that's something that we definitely want to when we come we have our community discussions that's definitely a priority because because it's supposed to be a safe space like we want to know what makes you feel safe you know what i'm yeah. saying what what makes you feel unsafe what makes you feel uncomfortable how yeah. what what do you imagine like your perfect safe space being yeah taking all those notes obviously because those are very important like how do you y'all feel because we don't have the same experience as everybody else you know? yeah it's true so, especially when you especially when you've like come up in the scene and you've been it successful as all of y'all have seen success you know what i mean it's like we've seen success so what i've come to find out is like a lot of people have different experiences because of like what we've ex what we've done and what who we know and who we're associated with so sometimes we have a much different experience with someone than others so it's kind of like it's so delicate navigating these things so um it's actually it sucks that the rona is <laughs> we're all out of work because of the rona and we've had to like figure shit out and um realistically how do you think um when do you not how when do you think um we'll be able to like re rebuild and see aunties 
you know come into like real fruition yeah yeah really like walk in the doors and shit when like we we can't we don't know what the rona is gonna do right but like what what do you what are y'all thinking like 2021 2022 like i mean We've had so many different, you know, discussions um, with, with amazing leaders that have owned businesses and venues um, in the last couple months. Um, and they all are ready to open up in the spring of 2021. Um, so that's why we wanted to jumpstart it now. So sure. we can the lead on, on building with our, our staff, hire, like obviously hiring, training. Getting Everyone staff. else is doing that now, so y'all should be doing that now. Yeah, so. just, it's the perfect time to be building, yeah. you know, because we can't yeah. do anything. Yeah. Um, so when the time things open back up, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, it's going to be spring of 2021, but we don't know. The corona is just, who, who knows? Yeah. But, yeah. but getting the start now so we can build the strongest foundation possible. Mm -hmm. um, so when the time comes, we can open and, you know, and continue to keep growing it from there. But, but as of now, just the dates that we hear is spring of 2021. Yeah. Okay. We also so, want to make sure that we're not rushing things because we're not, we're not going to just, we're not going to perpetuate the same ways that other venues have run. No. So we want to make sure that we have a really strong foundation for what makes sense of our mission mm -hmm. um, and what makes sense for the community that we want to serve. Like, I think first, a lot of venues right now, you know, their main interest is capital, but yeah. our main interest is community. So we're not yeah. going to That's push a big them. difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Will there be snacks? That's my biggest question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll have some of my purse, you know, I always come with a few. <laughs> um, again, we want people to understand, like, we're human beings as well. Um, in many cases, we are our own trailblazers. We don't have somebody to really follow in this. Um, so we are looking to other people for advice to help us even set up an intentional and thoughtful framework to be able to work with community. Mm. Um, it might take more time than people are, um, that, that people want. So there might be a sense of impatience, but rest assured, like we are really working towards having these happen within the next few weeks. And it does take time to build that framework because we don't want to just rely on our own knowledge. We want to bring in other experts who have work with um, frame building, work with transformative justice, work um, within placemaking to be able to really take the information and to be able to um, translate it into something productive and, and a framework for us to go down, you know, to, to guide us down this path. So we just, we just want to let people know that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Rome, what, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know? Yeah. And then it's, you know, like, it's going to take a little bit of time, but um, it's, we have not forgotten and we are not ignoring anybody. No. We're just being really, really intentional and thoughtful because we care. Mm -hmm. It's imperative that we have conversations like this mm -hmm. um, and that we ask questions and that we, we talk about, like, our own um questions and concerns because as as women in the scene we have a lot of the same concerns as musicians and take gender and race and everything and background out of it as musicians we want to fucking have dope spaces to fucking do our shit yep. and we don't always want to have to like ask for permission for shit you know so you know nothing's gonna be the same and we don't want it to be the same Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to build this space. Uh, we want to have a new beginning to come out of after all of this. We don't want to go back to the same thing. Yeah, hopefully out of this shit, we become <laughs> television stars. <laughs> <laughs> Let me I, I, I knew them when. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Keezy, Sophia, Midnight, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes. This is actually our season finale, so what a dope-ass way to end it. You. <laughs> Y'all are a talent and an asset to the city, and we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, as are y'all. So yes. we love y'all. And we are and looking forward to seeing aunties thrive. So love y'all. What she said. Love y'all, respect <laughs> y'all, value y'all. Yes. Appreciate y'all. I'm going to just end it here. Well, I'm gonna, see, y'all always say I'm going to end it, and it's like weird. It like feels weird. So I'm going to stop recording. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, we here at Big Silky feel that you deserve the best of web-based entertainment. In these undocumented, unparalleled, unseasoned times, 
We need each other to get through this. Because, frankly, shit is wild crazy. And then it's boring at the same time. So, a very silky show is here for you. Young Silky, OG Silky, Psalm 1, Angel Davenport. A very silky show. It's a very silky show. I mean, it's the last fucking last episode of the season. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get some sl- some song bars. You I'm feel me? Fire, fire. Yeah, we gonna do some fire, fire. <laughs> hey, uh, we gonna do some fire, fire. Uh, y'all love a bad bitch. Hate to be good to her. Uh, they so goofy and I swear they getting goofy. Uh, this is to any of you niggas with abuse files with no accountability. The secrecy, you tweaking G. All of my DMs on fire right now. About to get all of you scumbags. Fire right now. BLM and me too. In a sec, hit the deck. Hate me. Y'all creepy and rapey. Y'all creepy. These young people got real slime balls for idols. Following these gatekeepers. Fuck if I do. I'ma give them game to make them not break them. A sold out show does not allow you to rape them. Hip hop is life, but people make it ugly. Women get reduced to tax write offs and fuck tings. Now, how y'all feel about diversity hires? Them people you dismiss stay low and keep firing. Them B I P O C us queers gon' keep mobbing. This weak ass little statement y'all made don't keep talking. Please just keep quiet, I'ma put y'all on a diet. And we don't need y'all food au revoir, y'all through. Bye, bitch. Ooh, I think I even fucked up a little, but y'all get the motherfucking bars. Y'all get what the fuck I'm talking about? Don't put, don't do, please for yourself, do not play with me, bro. Do not play with me. I'm talking to every fucking single one of y'all. Y'all better keep it cute. Niggas is taking over. Stop being creepy. Yeah, I said it. Creepy I, and rapey. Creepy. Can I say it? Yeah. Boycott rhyme sayers, bitch. <laughs>